one of them has just joined us just now, and I'll be doing the introductions in here in just a few minutes as everyone pops on board. So as we get started, a few points of housekeeping and around our calendar and our schedule for the year, uh, tons of Business Academy events, trainings, and sessions happening in the coming weeks and months. So in case you guys don't have it, you can go to our website, uh, businessacademy.com. You can get a copy for you to print yourself off a calendar for the remaining months of the year, meaning June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We are almost halfway into the year, which means we are halfway towards exceeding all of our goals for 2023. I know a lot of you guys are on target. Others are getting on target, but no better way than to invest in yourself and keep investing in your staff based on what you have available on your program. And uh, while we're getting started, Dr. William Thomas, welcome. Go ahead and turn your webcam on. Uh, Dr. Kevin Prime, what's going on? Hey, go ahead and turn your webcam on, guys, so we can see you. Awesome. Hey, Jennifer, good to see you. Every Dr. Prime in the house. I like that org board in the back right there. Looking good. Awesome. Dr. McEwen is joining us as well. Dr. Mike, what's going on? Dr. T is going to turn on his webcam here in a minute too. Dr. Shock is joining us as well. And uh, another one of our seventh division rock stars, Dr. Tim Steflick is here with us today as well. So as we're getting started, we're going to get a few more people on board here. Uh, just a reminder, we have in just this, uh, actually th this weekend, um, the third, uh, sorry, the first and the second Thursday and Friday, we'll be having communication and closing seminar part A happening, both in person and live stream. That's going to be June 1st and 2nd. That is this Thursday and Friday, live stream as on Zoom, as well as live in person here for part A. We're recycling part A again here for your staff. Number of times over is going to be key, whether your staff can attend all of it or part of it, whether you can attend all of it or part of it as part of your program. We would love to have you guys on board. Cindy, just put the link there in the chat box to register all your team members. Make sure that your staff are on board. Dr. Fortunato just joined us. Ready to rock and roll. Awesome. Beautiful. And then don't forget, we are one month away from our next 7th Division meeting, as well as our next workshop happening here in Clearwater as well. Agendas are out and available for that. Link to more information is in the chat box there. Again, you can, for the workshop, it's Friday and Saturday are going to be great for staff and managers and yourself. And for 7th Division members on today, make sure you book your tickets. And we'll see you here for our next 7th Division Mastermind that's June 23rd and 24th. So again, June 23rd and 24th, Friday is a great day to send all of your staff to, focusing on marketing and new patients, focusing on day one, day two, closing cash services, focusing on better patient retention and front desk scheduling skills. And then of course, uh, leadership topics that'll be beneficial for everybody. Saturday, June 24th, great implementation session uh, on all the Hubbard management systems, focusing around building hats, building hats and training uh, uh, for your team. We're going to have laptops open June 24th. We're actually going to be creating hats. I'm going to help you guys use the power of AI to get all the hats created for your office in a six hour period. I've already done it. I've been doing it and I can't wait to do it with your team. So if you're like, I don't have time to do hats. My staff are too busy. Make this six to eight hour commitment on that Saturday, June 24th to live stream or join us in person. And I'll walk them through getting hats and SOPs written for every single position in your office by the time the day is over. So that's going to be June 24th. So guys, make sure to register as well. Last announcement for those on the West Coast, we are going to be with you guys once again, June 20th to the 23rd on the West Coast. We're going to be hanging out in the Bay Area, California. Dr. Matt Alexander he has got four clinics out there and a TBA member has graciously opened up his clinic in Livermore, California, about a half an hour. Uh, from the San Jose International Airport, about 45 minutes from San Francisco International. We'll be opening up his office to house you and your team to get through your training courses, certifications, modules, as well as attend our July workshop in Livermore, California, just outside of San Jose. Beautiful area, gorgeous practice. Can't wait to have you guys there. Again, July 20th to the 23rd. Uh, more information in the links in the chat box here. Make sure you can attend. That one will not be live streamed, but we will be there live on the West Coast for you guys. So looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Okay, well, let's go ahead and kickstart today's session off. Today is a seventh division panel. Uh, I have uh, not only myself kind of as a moderator today, but I have Dr. Tim Steffley joining us uh, uh, out in the beautiful central Florida and, and, and uh, on the Atlantic coast. Uh, four practices, medically integrated, and will be sharing some best practices for 
how you can more efficiently get to phase two and whatever questions you guys have for him and our panel as well. Dr. Dave Morris is with us today as well. And I know he's going to be sharing a lot of best practices of what he's used. Many of you guys know him from your years in uh, you know training and integration, as well as here with the Business Academy. So a lot of big hitters today joining us. I just want to say thank you both for being on the call today, Dr. Tim, Dr. Morris. Thanks, guys, for taking some time today. Sure. Awesome. And Tim, let me go ahead and check your microphone there just for a second. Uh, yep. Can you hear yep. me? So we're good to go. Awesome. And we have a few more 7D members on their way that will be joining on today's panel. So as we get started today, Dr. Morris, do you mind just quickly just doing a quick uh, kind of elevator story here on your, 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 kind of your history and practice and how, how, how long you've been working with the Hubbard management system um, and where that's taken you uh, from and where you're at now? I'd rather not say how long because it's going to age me. <laughs> um, I graduated uh, December of 1996 and went to a clinic that was using Hubbard Management System on December 17th of that same year. So uh, my entire career, I've been using Hubbard Management System in in practice. So can't say that, you know, I'm like an expert at it, but I've been using it for for a long time and uh it's gotten me everything that i have you know i mean it's uh that and that and other things that uh hubbard offers as far as personal development has has you know taken me to from being somebody who frankly had a really hard time even making it out out of clinic because i couldn't really talk to people very easily about chiropractic and wellness uh to you know now we have three and a half million dollar a year clinic in middle tennessee and uh, about 30 minutes out of side of Nashville and um, I'm largely phase two. Like I don't, I don't really have to be here most days. Uh, obviously there's days when the proverbial uh, stuff hits the fan where you got to come in and fix things up. But for the most part, you know, it runs, uh, runs pretty well without me. So. That's awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to kickstart the conversation with a couple questions. I'm going to move it over to Dr. Tim here in just a minute. Um. Dr. Morris, I mean, what would you say there, there's a, you know, everyone here has either studied some of or has been, you know, really diving deep into the Business Academy's executive courses. They've attended these webinars, they've been to workshops, they're putting in org boards and stats and hats and training and uh, better ways to manage and grow their practice using a lot of this system. You know, there's a whole panoply in, uh, of, of courses, information you can pull from, but what would you say has, like, what piece of business system or business technology has stood out to you the most to get from again where you were now again you said about three and a half million dollar a year practice and largely phase two so much that you could probably you know uh, lean on as to how you got there but what would you say if you had to flash answer what's one of the most important pieces of things that you learned from this system that helped you get to where you are from from the management technology uh Oh, that's so hard to pin down. <laughs> uh, you guys could tell he did not prep me ahead of time for these questions. Um, the best I don't know. Ask questions, right? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, specific for me specifically, I think the thing that's helped me the most is just the Hubbard drills and and courses on communication. Uh, you know how to um, you know tools for communication in the biz in business. Those communication drills they they changed my life. I mean, they it was. That was the thing that uh, I had a hard hard time doing. You know, it helps you helps you confront anything. You know, helps you be able to face whatever you got to do. So if there's something that you're shying away from, it is a uh, confront problem. You know, and uh, those communication drills certainly help you uh, communicate better. You just said if there's something you're shying away from, it's a confront issue. I think that's I think I, there's there. I think all of us can agree there's something in in our business that we're shying away from and don't want to confront and. Uh, that tends to be the Achilles heel of our growth. Would you agree? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, everybody has it to some degree, you know, if it were, you know, that if it were all easy and no, you know, nobody comes to your doorstep and says, by the way, here's a box that dropped off from Amazon has all your dreams inside. So uh, you, <laughs> you got to go after it. And if you're not, uh, and if you're not, if you don't have what you want, then, you know, my mentality for, for since 1996 really has been that if, if somebody can even think it possible, like if somebody can even dream it up, it must be possible. You know, it must be, it, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean you have all the knowledge and technology, but if you can even think of it, it must be possible. How, how could you even think of it if it weren't? So I don't know. That's just the mentality that I had. And if I'm not getting there, then there must be something that I'm not addressing. 
So, and uh, usually if I'm not addressing it, it means I'm not willing, uh, I'm not wanting to. <laughs> There's some confront problem on it. So. That's great. I love that. It's good advice there. I'm going to, uh, I know you might have to jump here in a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to pop back over to you in just a second, Dr. Morris. Let me introduce Dr. Tim to the panel here as well. Dr. Tim Steffel, like most of you guys know him. He's joined us on many webinars here in the past, but um, multiple practices, he'll tell you uh, nothing special about him. I think there's a lot special about Dr. Stafflick, but he'll, he'll tell you otherwise. He's just a, another chiropractor, you know, getting in there, applying the systems. But uh, Dr. Stafflick, you know, I know you're, you're very humble, right? But I do like to, to brag on you a little bit. I mean, myself and Dr. Tim met each other, you know, first almost 11 years ago, and we were both almost in our beginning of our journeys, you know, where we are today. Um, I was just a young trainer here at the business Academy and he was just a young chiropractor. He's still young, but, um, yeah, young chiropractor, just starting off in practice and barely seen a hundred visits a week. And, and, uh, Tim, you were, you, you always say you're working harder than seeing a hundred visits a week on your own than you are now with four clinics and more kids. Yeah, that's the truth. Um, so yeah, we've come a long ways. I mean, it, it's, it's. I really like what Dave said there. I mean, I like listening to Dave talk. Uh, you know, if you can dream it, if you can think it, it's possible, right? And a lot of the things that we haven't even thought of, they're possible too. We just haven't thought of them yet, you know? And so, um, you know, it's where, where are your expectations? And I think my expectations were, were a lot lower then than they are now. You know, I just keep raising expectations with what, I ex what I expect to accomplish in my life and with my business and my family. And so, uh, yeah, where, where are your expectations? And then you can just take yourself to get to that point. And so, you know, originally I thought I was like, oh man, if I take home, a take home 150 K a year and get, you know, a few weeks of vacation here, I'd be happy. That would make me happy. That'd be good. Then you get there and you realize, well, but but why not? You know, why not have more and, and do more? And it's not about more material things per se, but about freedom with family and uh, being able to spend time with them and create the lives that you you want, you know, and then all while helping people along at the same same time. That's awesome. And then how, how did it happen to where you were able to sustain? I mean, as you were opening up more clinics, you know, your family was growing. Right. So you have to kind of catch up your clinics to five kids, four clinics. I mean, how do you balance it all using this, the, a lot of the systems here at the business Academy? So, I mean, it, it allows you to free up time. I was listening to a podcast on the way you're talking about balance between life and work and you know, balance is like, well, I have to be with my family and I have to be at work and that's balance, but why not just do more of what you love to do? You know? So why, why do you have to, why do you have to balance things? I mean, you love work and you love your family, but do more of what you love to do instead of just focusing on, well, I have to do this or I have to do that. Um, I mean, I get that you have to do things to, to pay the bills and to, to do what you need to do to, to feed yourself and your family, but you should do what you want to do and do more of that thing, not just focus on saying, well, I have to do this or I have to do that and trying to balance it so much as uh, putting in those systems in place, you have that freedom to do more of what you want to do. Maybe it is work more on the business. Maybe it is you want to spend more time learning other businesses or learning, you know, investing or, or what to do with your money. Or, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be family. Um, but do more of what you like to do. And, and the systems have created that freedom for me to be able to do a little bit more of that. That's awesome. And I'm going to ask uh, to, uh, one quick question for both of you guys. And then I'm going to take some questions here from the Zoom group for our seventh division panel. Um, I, I, there's not an exact number to this, but you know, how much do you invest, Dr. Tim, Dr. Dave, regarding your like personal, you know, your personal development, your professional development, right? How much do you invest in yourself time wise? I mean, I think sometimes we're too busy to, we're too busy being busy that we don't have time to work on ourselves and we're trying to solve problems so we can find time to work on ourselves, but then we don't have time to work on ourselves and the cycle continues and we, we, we keep running the same cycle over and over again. So I don't know, I mean, weekly, monthly, whether it's personal, you know, spiritual enhancement or whether it's professional development with um, casual or, you know, professional certifications, how often do you guys invest in yourself? How much, 
much time would you say? I'll start with Dr. Morris and Dr. Tim, same question. Tim, you want to go first? <laughs> sure. I mean, it, it's got to be every day, for me, a little bit every day, um, because that's what keeps me focused, right? So, you know, it's my listening to podcasts on the way to work. It's my, for me, it's my scripture study that keeps me uh, focused spiritually. Um, you know, there's there's a lot that has to be done every day. And then obviously the seminars, the webinars, if, if you ask any, at least from what I've heard, I don't know personally it's many billionaires, but most of them are, when they ask, what should I do with my first thousand dollars, right? That I have to invest somewhere. They're going to tell you to invest in yourself because that's the one investment that you, you can't ever lose that. No one can ever take that away from you. Whatever you learn, whatever you have here, you have forever. And so that's why millionaires and billionaires, they can build more businesses. They can do it again, right? They can sell out for 500 million, 30 million, whatever. And they could do the same thing over again because they invested in themselves. They know how to do it. It wasn't just a struck of low, a struck, a lucky strike. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's that investment in yourself. So um I don't know how much time I spend, but it, it's, you know, every day there's a little bit of something that I'm doing at least 15, 20 minutes a day. And then obviously, you know, I, I put on my calendar, I block out the, the seminars as soon as seven or as soon as a TBA puts out the training schedule, I block out my calendar and say, I'm going to plan my vacations and my time off around those things. That's awesome. That's great. Um, Dr. Morris. Uh, I, I've been to echo what Tim said. It's, it is, it is every day, every day, something to enhance who I am, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, you know, I don't, I don't look at it as a selfish thing. I look at it as an absolute necessity that I have to give time to make myself better. I'm, I'm, I can only get people around me and the world around me to be as, to be better if I'm getting better. Like, um, cause I want to give back. I want to, I want to do more for I mean, I, planet's not in great shape, you know, I mean, it's just not. And, um, and I don't believe it's up to somebody else to fix, but if I only get to a certain level and I can't see, I, I heard, heard something on the radio on, uh, on the way to work one morning, this was six, seven years ago now. And it said, um, you know, you, your maximum potential, something about your maximum potential. And it got me thinking, I was like, what in the hell is that? You know, like, what is your maximum potential? Do I, do I really believe that I'm going to get to a certain level and I go, I can't even be a little bit better than that. That's the most I could be is just that right there. So I don't feel, I, I just don't want to be limited by anything. And that space between my two ears is going to be what dictates that. So I want to work on that, um, improving myself and improving others every day. And I do, uh, you know, sometimes it's like Tim said, 20 minutes, but uh, lots of days it's an hour, hour and a half, you know, and uh, sometimes that's includes listening to podcasts and seminars and lectures and things like that. But a lot of it's every day. It's, it is. Yeah, it's every day. Makes sense. Every day. I think it's one really key thing. We, you know, when we don't have time for it, we make time for it and we find out, you know, what can we, uh, what can we, what can we shift over to make to make time for it every day. That's going to allow us to have more time and to, to grow. And I think the, our growth and our business is going to be to the degree that we ourselves are growing at the same time in whichever way we need to. Let me open up the floor here for a second. So Jennifer, uh, Dr. Joe Taylor, 7th Division, and Dr. Karina Taylor from 7th Division are here as well. I'm going to be getting them here in just a few minutes. Dr. Matz, Dr. Prime, any of you guys, Dr. Huffer, feel free. I'm going to let, I'm going to, I'll let the mics open up here. Uh, Dr. Leif Stevens, Dr. Thomas, whether it's in the area of getting to phase two, profitability, service centers, marketing, closing cash services, patient retention. Man, the floor is yours. I'm going to be moving out of the way here and letting the panel kind of help take your questions. So I'll put my mic on mute here in just a minute, but I'll let any one of you guys jump on in with your first question for our panel in any area of the practice. Dr. Fortunato, anybody feel free to jump on in. The floor is yours. Dr. Mike. always the best part getting the first question out all right 
Good. All right. Well, I'm going to go to Dr. Fortunato. Dr. Fortunato, I'm going to let you, you've, you've uh, had, you've seen some uh, uh, strokes of uh, good conditions here at the Business Academy using this system. But again, you, you got these two, uh, actually I'd say these four seventh division panel experts, Dr. Joe and Karina Taylor and Dr. Dave Morris and Dr. Tim Steflick. What questions do you have for them on areas of the practice to help you scale to your goals this year? I'll unmute your microphone there. Well, first thing is when I grow up, I want to be like each and every one of them some way, shape, or form. So that's the first thing. Dave, I was at uh, your office uh, several years back out there in Murfreesboro. Uh, I was signing up for a certain integration group there, and your presentation was was very good. And I've had the opportunity to listen to you with, uh, I guess it's uh, um, your CEO's dad, when you guys used to do your little presentations way back when. And they were always better when you did all the talking, but we'll not talk about that anymore either. Who, who uh, uh, Brenna's dad. Uh, oh, Bob. Yeah, Bob. Bob, way back when. Um, so, uh, no, I just, uh, a specific question, no. I, I don't have any. Uh, there's going to be a million of them here in about one second. Get ready here. But just till I, till I get going, um, off the top of my head, no, I'm just... I yeah, sorry. Oh, I'll let the gears get uh, get warmed up there. Let me go to Dr. Mike there. I know Dr. Mike, I don't know if you're available the whole hour here. So I'm going to give the uh, Dr. Mike McEwen the phone to you there or the floor to you for a second. Again, our panel is here. Questions in the areas of marketing, service centers, closes, personnel, scaling, phase two. You can uh, you can take it away, my friend. Thanks, Ethan. Hey, guys. Uh, nice to see everybody. Hey, um, both to David and Tim, I, I guess my biggest obstacle one is myself I, I understand that but number two like i'm i i've i've done some executive courses you know put my foot in the water put my foot out of the water by the time i put my foot back in the water and do another course it is time has elapsed since i did my last course so i guess what would you say would be the best recommendation in starting i guess restarting the engine meaning go back i mean i i know i don't i know i can take responsibility to do some of the courses on my own i get that but like would you say if i you know, is there a time period that you found, hey, I found it best when I when I went down every three months, every two weeks, whatever, whatever the case is, in, I guess, in, in rapid succession? Or did you did you guys actually do it in your own space? I know Tim, Ethan said, Tim, you got five kids, etc. Family life, everything gets in the way. Um, what would what would be your take on that in a nutshell? Thank you. Uh, my, my opinion on it <clears throat> is you go down as often as you can, but you're going to have to study on your own. You're going to have to work at the application on your own. Uh, you know, you're going to have to go through and, and reread the material um, several times. You know, uh, uh, Ethan started off this uh, talk with number of times over equals certainty and results. It's a, a, a Hubbard datum. Uh, you, you're going to have to go over uh, lots of times to, to really start to get it down. In my opinion, there's stuff that I've studied dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And I will study uh, many, many, many more times. Uh, condition formulas, you know, if you're having trouble, if you're having trouble staying on course on something, not just staying on, on course, but staying the, on, on the path, then I would make sure that there's not, you know, Ethan can go over this with you regarding, um, you know, the study technology that Hubbard developed, which is, you know, just making sure you're not missing, you're not misunderstanding anything. You actually understand the information because if you don't understand the information, you're not going to apply it. You're not going to be able to apply it and it'll get shoved in a drawer. And one day you'll be like, oh, there was that information, pull it back out and you feel like you're starting all over. So make sure you, you're making sure your study technology is in place while you're studying it and then go over to it at home get down to TBA as often as you can, you know, go there. There's nothing that's going to replace you being immersed in it down there because you're just not going to have as many distractions, but um, for sure, studying on your own, you know, pull something out every day and reread it, you know, or read something new about it. That That's my opinion. Great point. Tim, you want to jump in on that one? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one other thing that knowledge like you can learn anything, uh, anywhere and you can pay for some of it, or some of it could be free. A lot of stuff you can learn on YouTube, right? There's good stuff on YouTube. There's bad stuff on YouTube, but the real value is being able to implement it and to do it. And that's where people fail is not knowing, right? You can, you can go and study and do as much as you want, but your ability to implement it is the key that's going to actually 
make move the needle, right? That's going to make the difference. So I I would say, yeah, as often as you can. Um, I went down and I did like the 10 days in a row to start to kickstart things off, left my family. It was a sacrifice. And I told my wife, I said, Hold hey, a second. I know we do, we do, we have some guys that do their stuff on Zoom and a weekend at a time. You did, I'm just going to clarify, I'm kind of being facetious because I was there with you during those 10 yeah. days in the first 10 days, but you did 10 days straight across country, right? Yeah, this was a training center was in California. I'm in Florida. And um, right before Christmas it was December. Right. And so I but I, I made the decision. I said, I've, I've got to sacrifice now. Or I'm going to be, be paying for it later. Right. And if I can sacrifice now. Then I'll I'll have that benefit later. So our decisions, just like when you're closing a patient, you have to be thinking of your future self. Is your future self going to be thanking you for what you actually did? Or are you going to be saying, I wish I would have uh, done that. And so for me, um, yeah, as often as I can, that's why I put those things on my calendar to make sure that I can, I can uh, get my training, right. And, and mastermind with other doctors and everything, but, and then as fast as I can implement it. So if I'm not implementing the things that I've learned, it's worthless. It, you won't, and you won't retain it. Right. It's like the, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of sayings out there, but you, you retain a lot more when you do something or when you teach something than if you just read it or study it or learn it. But if you're actually doing it, and let's say like uh, Dr. Dave mentioned about uh, condition formulas. Okay, so you go, you learn about condition formulas, but you go home and you don't use them at all, but you know all about condition formulas. You're gonna forget pretty quick how to use a condition formula and it's not gonna help you one bit, right? On how to, to assign a condition and, and apply it. So um, as quickly as you can apply it and implement it, you know, you could, you could be doing something every couple of weeks. You could be doing something a little bit every day, really. You know, when you have those courses, you should be studying at home and then uh, you're taking the time to invest that. And then uh, TBA has gotten really good with their implementation staff. Um, so I have staff going through courses and she has like a bi-weekly phone call on, hey, did you implement this part of the course? And um you know, we've got an awesome coach that, that does that for us. So um, I sit in on those calls to, to see what's going on, and it's always good stuff. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the input. Appreciate it. That's awesome. That's great. Oh. Thanks, gentlemen. That's good. And then uh, to everyone's point in the chat box here, Pam just chimed in. Most of you guys know and love Pam. She's one of our rock star coaches. She does amazing implementation calls as well, as Tim's mentioning. So she just put her information down for you guys to touch base with her to help with the implementation process. I know. Um, I know when Dr. Tim and, and Dr. Morris were doing their training back in the day, they were kind of like, all right, do the course. You're off on your own, figure it out. All right, you got to coach kind of guide along the way. But now we've really done our best to provide as much guidance as possible in the implementation process. So make those calls, make it a priority. Again, sometimes when you don't have time to, to when you're stuck in your business, it's time to work on your business. And that's what these implementation uh, calls and strategies are really all about with, with, with what they're saying today. So super key. Let me uh, bring in Dr. Joan Karina Taylor for a second other seventh division members that are part of this group. And I have a question for you guys, husband, husband, wife team, right? As you guys are growing and scaling the practice, you guys have, you know, a lot of your journey in practice has been with the business Academy and you, you know, you've gone through ups and downs and gone through growth in the process and learned a lot of things and grown along the way. How does, and we have some husband, wife teams here on, on the uh, zoom session. So real briefly, how do you guys balance or organize your practice in a way to where, you know, it's, it's not both of you guys stepping on each other's toes, but you can develop a company culture to where the office knows who's in charge of what. And it's not, you know, uh, mom says no, dad says yes. And there's cross orders all over the place, but there's unity and alignment between the two of you and also with your team. Ladies first. That's one way right there, Ethan. That's right. Yeah. Yes, dear. And ladies first. <laughs> um, so I would honestly say um, the best thing that we have implemented was the org board. Um, prior to the org board um, in our office, it was a lot of, well, Dr. T said this, Dr. K, you're saying this. Who do we go off of as far as the word because we have the same vision we just may implement things a little bit different so the org board um, clearly identified as far as like 
what Dr. Taylor is responsible for, what you go to Dr. K for, so that way that the team, they know, okay, Dr. K, your office manager, you're over um, the production, quality control, hiring, firing, all of that. Dr. Taylor, you're over collections, the executive department. We both own the practice, but it's more so identifying so we're not stepping on each other's toes. Um, and it's a waste of time. If both of us are trying to work on the same thing, um, we're not really accomplishing much. So the org board, I would say, um, definitely was what impacted the office more so on getting on the same page and working faster together. Doc. And, then, and then I'll mm -hmm. ask you a follow-up to that. How are you guys, how does, Dr. Joe, how does that go from something you create in a call or a series of calls whether it was your in-office delivery or calls with, with Pam or your coach, how does it go from a document that's on the wall that just becomes wallpaper, right? And collects dust versus it being an active point of reference to help organize your team and to help you guys, you know, grow with, with a team in place. Yeah, no, that's definitely a real good point um, because what, what Dr. K just said, as far as like, you know, sh directing people, for a while after our in-office delivery, it was wallpaper. Um, it was just sitting there. We didn't reference it much. Um, it was there, we knew it. We had turnover, team members came in, didn't really know what it was. So one of the things that um, we did, and Dr. K was the one who implemented this, was making that a part of the onboarding process. Uh, so that as soon as people are coming on board, they understand one, what the org board is, what information it gives, valuable final products, but also making sure that they know who to go to for what. Because there was a time where we were kind of given all these cross orders and stuff like that. It's frustrating, cause issues, the team is confused, but it's to the point now where we, we do own our hats um, a lot better. And if somebody's coming to me for something that they should be coming to her about disciplining myself to actually just not answer it, even if I can, but directing them over to the person that they should be going to. So that also trains them in knowing how to actually handle things. And something as simple as that, it seemed like common sense, but when you know what's going on and you know the answer to it, sometimes it seems like it's easy to just answer them in that moment or just handle it, but it definitely makes it a lot harder when you don't actually stick to wearing your hat and then you know train the team on how to actually move throughout the office. So it's definitely helped tremendously um, and we actually even have to remind ourselves, you know, it's like, hey, this is your hat. Let me let me let me back off and you know let you let you handle that. And that definitely helps uh, within the practice, within the marriage, because you know if there are other couples, you know, on here, that's a big part of it, you know. And sometimes that can be friction that's that's easily avoidable by that little piece of wallpaper that actually has a lot of important uses. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Great point. Okay, good. I'm going to go into another question here uh, to the to the group. Uh, let me go to uh, Jennifer. You you've been really investing in a lot of your training. I see you pretty much here every Tuesday with your team. You were just with us out in Phoenix, getting through uh, some of your TBA courses out there. Um, you got the floor here. I know you tend to uh, you know obviously bring great questions to the, the webinar, but based on where you guys are at and kind of moving to your next step here, in as we go into you know the other parts of 2022, what 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 area of the practice could you use some help in and want to check with our panel on? Can you hear me? Oh, yep, there sure we can. go. Um, <clears throat> like I said, we've been kind of like, you know, just doing everything and trying to take it all in and doing some of the basics trainings. Um, I've done the management basics course. So I guess one thing would be like, what would be the next course um, from people that have had experience that you would add on to that um, to help grow? And other than that, I'm just still kind of like just taking it all in. <laughs> I'm just looking for all the nuggets on here. <laughs> I love it. Well, we'll keep the questions coming. We'll go rapid fire. I mean, uh, I would obviously, I think I suggested the executive fundamentals course, but but uh, Tim, do you want to share some of the other courses that were, were uh instrumental for you there? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Am I unmuted now? Yeah, you're good. No, 
Now, now you're muted again. How about now? Okay, the buttons disappeared for some reason for a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, so courses that I, I mean, she said executive basics or, or basics of organization. That's the ones I'm having my staff go through. Um, there used to be a course, and I don't, you shouldn't even say it because it may not be offered anymore, but there was a course for, um, it was like, a, it was basically the in, in office delivery type course where it had a little bit of everything. Um, but you really had to go, you really do need to go deep into each of these uh, subjects, you know, subject material. So it's not, I think that's why maybe it isn't being offered, but it was like an executive staff hat type course. Um, so yeah, I found um, the conditions course has been very successful for us as well too. Um, if that one can be applied. And then uh, management by statistics is another one that I absolutely love as well too. It's common practice. It's like if same thing you ask others, things I get are usually from other successful business owners. It's not like I have these original ideas myself, <laughs> but it's usually other, um, if you ask another successful business owner, they're going to know their statistics and they're going to know what to do with them. You know, not just, oh, hey, we had you know, seven new patients last week, or we had 22 new patients last week. And okay, so what do you do with that? And I think the statistics goes along with the, the conditions formula, obviously, as well, too. So, um, you know, those are some of my favorite ones. If your coach knows which course you should take next. I would trust them. Awesome. Love that. Well, really fast, I'm going to jump in here. Dr. Robbins joining us. Uh, part of the, I was going to have more 7D members, but so many of y'all are on vacation this week, you know, just enjoying your phase two life. Dr. Baljinder Gill is at three practices up in the Pacific Northwest. He's on his third week of his zero trip. Of, he's in Paris, France. He's going to try to join us as well, but he, he wasn't sure if he's going to be able to get on or not. But Robin's over in Antigua right now on her 16th vacation, I think, for the year, it seems like. Um, she's just traveling the world, uh, loving phase two, and her office is growing whether she's there or not. So, so Robin, quick piece of advice uh, all, the way from, all the way from Antigua. What would you say has been an instrumental part, you know, with, with growing your team, um, let's say, let's say like, you know, uh, you know, the importance of having like, like Dana has been a big part of your practice. So, you know, having a good closer and a good doctor and a good, you know, case manager, how important is having a case manager in your office that can do what she does? I'll let you go ahead and unmute your microphone there. Sorry. And I just got off a boat and <laughs> so came on here as quickly as possible. So I apologize, I'm in a bathing suit. Um, but um, case manager number one is that's going to be like, that's going to solidify your practice. Um, you have somebody, you get them trained, you get them trained on the RF course, but um, uh, the manage, all the management courses that they have, or the, um, no, I'm sorry, not the, the, the closing courses that they have. Uh, but mine also has taken all the management courses as well. So she's like very, very solidified. But even before that, she did all the closing courses and she is a master closer. And once you have that, that's what's going to grow your practice. That's going to be like the nugget that you need in order to like make your like to, just to really get your business to grow. And then once you get that growing and then you can just bring in, um, you know, the rest of your staff. But it's just so important to really get them to the academy and get them trained to get these courses and really um, just be involved with um, the Business Academy and have them training constantly on everything that they have and all their videos that they have in there. What do you call it, Ethan, your um, database? I'm not oh, even sure. Training vault. That we, the, the training vault, there we go, that we log into. And that's something that we have a two hour lunch. And so with our two hour lunch that they have an hour for lunch and then they have 30 minutes um, on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday of uh, just straight going through those videos and just sitting there listening. And then they report back to me their notes so I can actually make sure that they're paying attention to it. That's great. And I love that. So you're doing three days a week with your staff. They're doing 30 minutes of training each of those days. That's an hour and a half of training every week internally in the office with existing resources. That's huge. So if you guys could take any advice, I mean, utilize what's available that you can passively train your team on. Let me ask you another question too, Robin, before you go, if you're still there. Um, Robin, you're, Dana's just, I mean, if one thing I see between you, I see Dr. Steflick and Dr. Morris and a lot of 7D members uh, that are here and also not here, but like that you have really good case managers, right? That are that can really close, like, are good at closing cash services. Can you give us some of the qualities, maybe that 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 Dana possesses 
that you've been able to kind of lean on to help her grow? Like what qualities of a closer as a case manager are you looking for in somebody? Uh, I think you have a perfect example in someone like Dana that not only can close cases for you that are cash, but also uh, from there grow and to become a manager for the office to help take the pressure off of you. Well, I can, and I, I can say that Dana and I are one, we're twins. We are so much alike. Um, but one, she's super intelligent and I'm not saying all this about myself, but once she's super intelligent, she knows like she is, um, very good with, with people skills. She loves everybody. She has a passion for what she does. She has a passion for chiropractic care. She was actually a patient before she became, um, came into this position, but she actually worked for uh, another person that I knew but she just has this huge passion for it. And that's the thing is you have to find somebody that really knows what they're talking about. First off, they're trained and they listen, but they also know how sometimes you kind of like you read the person, you read the person you're talking to and you know how you can go off course a little bit with them. But typically you want to stick to the formula and you want to stick to the process of the ROF. But like every once in a while, and even uh, Dr. Gary Rodemacher will even tell you that, hey, you read the room, you read your person. And she is so amazing at doing that. And she's just really, really good at finding affinity with whoever she's talking to. You just go through the ARC triangle. If you guys don't know what that is, uh, please ask Ethan for more information on that because that is key is really getting to know that AR, like getting to know what the ARC triangle is and, and growing the ARC triangle. Uh, Cause that's, what's going to get you your in. That's going to get people to trust you. That's going to get people to like you. And you always want to do business with people that, you know, like, and trust. And then last follow-up question, Robin, I'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day today here in a second, but <laughs> can um, describe again, when just for everybody here, it's looking for a good case manager. Like, do I have the right case manager to invest in and train that will close and convert and get patients excited on cash services in my office? If they're trying to determine that person, can you talk about Dana's level of certainty, right? Now, Dana's very trained, she has years of experience, but even in the beginning, right? How would you describe her level of confidence and certainty as a non-doctor? talking to patients and how important that is for this person to be able to be that, have that much conviction when talking with a new patient. Well, when she came in and interviewed with me, like the very first thing she said, this is my dream job and I will kill it for you. That's how she opened up our interview. And so I was like, okay, tell me what you got. And so her level of certainty is on point, definitely high confidence. Uh, she doesn't back down. Um, and she'll be one too that will come in. And like, if we have a patient who is not an ideal person for our practice, she'll come to me and she said, yeah, I just sent them to Stittman down the road. And she's like, oh yeah, he'll take good care of you, blah, blah, blah. So she knows what, what we want in our practice, who we, like what, we, what type of people that we want to attract and who we want to actually take care of. And she knows the people who are going to want, you know, one adjustment and they're not going to stay, pay or refer. And, and hey, do they, they deserve to have help as well but you know we're probably not in that place for them we don't want to spend our time and energy and so she actually can direct them to somebody else who can give them what they want uh but she is just on point so certain and literally i'm not there that's she actually runs my practice who am i these days i'm just on vacation <laughs> i love it robin that's awesome well hey go enjoy the rest of your day today the rest of your vacation i'll let you go okay thanks for popping in Thank you so much. Love you guys. Awesome. Uh, I got some other, I got some more questions, but I want to hog the floor. I'm going to open up the floor to uh, Dr. Matt, Dr. Shock, Dr. Fortunato. I know your gear has been turning over there too. Dr. Hopper. Can I ask again. a question, Ethan? Yes, yes. Jump on I in. I thought please. of something. Yes. Um, For those of the masterminds, as far as marketing for your practice, I know there is like the marketing where you're doing Google ads, Facebook ads, radio, maybe TV, like you were throwing a lot of money into that every month to get leads and so forth. And then there's also your more grassroots marketing where you're doing the events, the lunch and learns, you're going and meeting with the attorneys, the other doctors. Um, what kind of is your marketing split? How much do you do of each? Have you found one works better than the other? I'll jump in and tell you that the the less money you have to spend on marketing, the more you're going to have to work to get the new patient. There are lots of practices out there. They're like, they've grown to the point where they just want to spend money to market. So they don't have to do the grassroots stuff the same old way, but that's an expensive way of doing it. You know, you could 
still go build a practice by knocking on doors and handing out business cards. So it's just a, it is a matter of how much, in my opinion, it's a matter of how much money you want to spend on marketing. If your goal is new patients, because you can get them by buying them or you can get them by going out and getting them. It just depends on where you want to put the, it's effort either way. It's effort. It's energy either way, because money is just energy, right? So it's energy either way. What energy do you want to spend? Do you want to spend bodies out on the, you know, hitting the pavement energy, or do you want to spend money energy on it? So that just, that, that I think that's a question you've got to ask yourself uh, and, and where you want to go with it. I would, I'm at a point, you know, I mean, I, golly, I can't, I can't tell you how many screenings I have done in my career over and, and, and lectures. And, and I like talking, so I don't mind going doing a lecture, but I'll be damned if I'm going to go out and do a screening on a weekend. I'm just not going to do it anymore. Uh, so I'm perfectly willing to go, Hey, what's my, what, what do I need to spend to get a, a patient in the door? Tim, I don't know where you are with things. I know we were talking about, you know, growing and spending money on marketing. I think, you know, you look at these big, huge companies and, and in most cases they got big because they spent money on marketing. It's not that they didn't, they don't spend marketing money on marketing because they're big. They got big because they spent money on marketing. That's good, Tim. I'd love to have you dovetail on that as well. Uh, kind of a mixture of both, again, one to make the investment. Um, and sometimes that investment works out and sometimes it doesn't, but also the value that you took with, you know, having marketers on, on your team doing boots in the ground, you know, shaking hands and meeting people too. So yeah. I want to say something on the marketing um, yeah, ahead, question as well. Sorry, can you hear me? Yep, yep, you're good. Oh, okay. Um, so what I've what I've discovered, which I'm relatively new to, to TBA and seventh division as well, but um, we we've been blessed to where we generate um, like you know 30, 40 new patients a month just organically, referrals, Google, word of mouth, you know that kind of thing, and we spent nothing on on advertising or marketing or anything like that. No Facebook ads, no no Google words or anything like that. And what I've now discovered, because I've done that pretty much the entire time I've owned my practice, is it does produce some good leads, but um, a, like a majority of those organic leads, like sometimes they're not, they're not going to come in. They're not, they're not searching for something like we do decompression. You know, those aren't patients. Those are patients that come in and they want to get an adjustment. You know, they want to get you know, they want to get the, 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 the most, the smallest service that you offer to, they want to use you as an Advil, you know, whereas if you're paying for like a condition specific, like if you have a knee program, if you have a decompression program, if you have a laser, if you have, you know, when you're marketing to specific conditions, you know, they're, they're coming in and they're, they're going to be willing, they're, they're searching for a solution for their, pro, for, for their problem that, that you have the solution or you have the possible solution to. So, um, I think like it took me a while to learn that, but now four or five years in owning my own practice, I'm like, well, you gotta, you gotta spend that money to get those high quality leads. And, you know, like the, 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 the quality of lead is so much better when, when, uh, when you have a, a good, a good campaign out there. That's a great point. And, uh, Tim, uh, follow up here too, whether same thing, you know, whether you have capital or you're whether you're willing to spend 10 or 15% of your gross income, you know, every month on marketing or whether you have minimal capital, but you got really, you got great team members and you got good marketers. Uh, can you describe a bit more about how marketers were not only one of the first strategic moves you made earlier on and, but how they're still part of your business today? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we all know we need to market. We all know we need new patients. Um, and it's, it's got to be the consistent flow, right? So for me, I found when you're looking at, you know, what type of marketing to do, Google ads or Facebook or, or grassroots efforts, you know, what's going to be consistent? And I found that doing all of them all the time has been the most consistent. So I don't know a percentage because every area is going to be different as far as what you feel. Or for example, there's this newspaper, right? Like who does a newspaper anymore? It's people think it's dead or it's gone. There's this particular newspaper in our area that is the most consistent uh, source of new patients and quality new patients. These are our, our, our big cash plan stem cell patients and they it pulls so good. We've been doing it for, I don't know, years, three, four, five years at least. And so we just don't quit doing it. We've maxed out the, the maximum amount that we can spend on it. And we do that every single month. Um, it actually goes out quarterly, but it's a, it's a fantastic 
example of like, you know, that's not offered in other areas. And I know other doctors that tried it in their area and it didn't work. So, but you have to find what works and then just keep doing more of that, right? You just keep putting, if you can spend $10 and get $100 back, we'll keep doing that more and more and more and more because it works. If you spend $10 and you get five back, stop doing that one, right? <laughs> so depending on what type of quality of patient you want and where you want them, but then finding what they are and then being consistent with them as well. So just, uh, you know, not backing off when times are good and not, um, you know, ramping up only when times are bad because you say, oh man, shoot, we got no new patients on the schedule next week. Well, it's already too late. You know, you're not going to turn on a switch and get new patients next week. You had to have done something to lead up to that. So that three-month marketing calendar, if that's still being taught, that's an excellent tool for us where we look ahead and say, okay, hey man, we have an event every single day this week, but man, three weeks from now, we have no events. So we better get on the ball. I don't care about these events this week. They're going to happen, but let's get something set up for three weeks from now. Um, so that's what's been successful for us. You know, I, I, I know our number. I'm sure Dave, I'm sure a lot of people on here know their number is too, is how many new patients you have to get per month or per week to hit your revenue target. And you've worked that backwards to say, I need this many new people. So if you can work that backwards, you know what you need to hit and new patients is kind of the basis. It's the lifeblood of the practice. And it's, if you know what that number is, then it's easy. You just have to hit that new patient mark and say, hey, I need 200 new patients this month. If I get 200 new patients this month, that's gonna build me you know, a $4 million practice or whatever it is for you. And then what would you say to uh, the practice owners that are here that don't have a marketer, uh, just haven't had time to go through the process of getting one? Uh, why was that? Why was that? And is that such an important piece of your team for your clinics? So, so for me, um, you know, I agree with what Dave said. It's, it's, it's an energy, right? So you can spend the money and money is just a representation of the energy that you put into it because you've earned that energy. Now you can put it back out. Money doesn't do you any good to hold on to it anyway. But for me, it's been nice having a full-time marketer. We have two um, because I can give them things and then not worry about it anymore. Because even if, let's say that we have a marketing agency doing our Facebook ads or our Google ads, I still it still takes up a lot of my time and attention to uh, check in with them. How are those ads going? Um, you know, but if I have the, the boots on the ground, the events, um, I can just tell them, or not tell them, I'm never going to tell them, but, you know, send them a, a message or a task, complete this, and then know that it's going to be done. I don't have to worry about it anymore instead of having that fall back on to me. Um, so having a head in that marketing department has been very important for me because it takes, it's one less hat that I have to wear. Awesome. Jennifer, that's a great question. Thank you. That's good. We got a few more minutes, guys. We got room for one or two more questions. Let me uh, move it over. Dr. Matt, anything, Dr. Matt, you want to jump in on uh, questions wise for the, uh, the group right now? Mm, I don't have any specific questions, no. Uh, just working on implementing all the stuff I've been learning. So, yep. Awesome. Perfect. As we wrap up guys, and before we wrap up, I have a really, I have another special guest that a seven division member who just popped in here, hanging out on his vacation. He's over in Paris, France. They've been to Greece. They were in Italy and now they're in their third or fourth country. I think that they're six hours ahead. Dr. Gill just popped in from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, again, I was telling him I was having a hard time getting enough, 7D panel members, because all y'all are on vacation. <laughs> I appreciate you taking Thanks. a few minutes to pop on. Uh, we're in the last couple minutes right now. I know you're probably going to be heading to bed pretty soon, but um, we're just talking best practices and, you know, obviously investments in training, investing in ourselves, marketing activities and so forth. I'll just ask you a real simple, open-ended question for yourself. You guys have, um, you know, as, as relative, I mean, in, in the scope of things, relatively newer practice owners, uh, but, you know, how have you been able to scale from one clinic growing that clinic to where it is now? And then you guys just are open up your third location and then you're on like a two and a half week vacation overseas and you guys just hit big numbers this last week. I mean, I don't want to make, I don't want to sound like a broken record when I say this PBA is all about getting you to phase two, but if you had to pin it on anything, man, I mean, between you and Dr. Dr. Sam McGill, what are some best practices you could share in like uh, two minutes or less here? Yeah, I mean, this isn't scripted at all. And uh, I, I promise everybody, Ethan didn't ask me to say this, but a big part was Ethan and TBA. Uh, I say the story all the time. It was back, uh, what was it, beginning of 2019, Ethan, when you came out for our first IOD. 
<clears throat> in the clinic. Uh, it was probably about a month or two before that, that we had contemplated canceling it, uh, eating the costs and whatever we had to, because we couldn't afford the money to even have you come out. That's how we were doing at the time. And after having that IOD, the, the training they did with the staff, the team uh, putting together those uh, stat sheets that we use now every single day since then, uh, that added, I mean, I say this all the time, added a million in revenue that year after you left from the previous year. And we have just grown since then every year nonstop, uh, continuing to, you know, go to TBA trainings, get nuggets wherever we can, join 7th Division. The main part about joining 7th Division was being able to collaborate with other docs and getting, you know, new service centers in, asking questions, uh, seeing what works, what doesn't work. That's that's the main reason why I go to these conferences. I know Daryl always tries to pull, pull me into the course room, but... I love just chatting with people, socializing and hearing, hey, what do you do in your practice? What do you, what do you got there? Where do you buy this from? And, and that motivates you, energizes you. When you come back, you, you keep going on it. And that having those stats. And then the other thing is uh, the training for the team, um, for everybody else too. Um, you know, having Daryl there, we had a team member that almost quit on us. He got on the phone with her and got her back on purpose. We have a clinic manager and, and having Ethan and Daryl train them takes a lot off our plate. And that's one of the main reasons that we're able to leave here for three weeks this is the scariest thing I've ever done. Uh, since uh, graduating from school, I've never been away from practice this long. And as you said, the numbers there are better than they've ever been. And so hopefully they, they stay that way. And this is scary to, to say and exciting that I think this is phase two. <laughs> so awesome. I love it. Well, uh, Tim, you got another uh, uh, colleague uh, in tow with you there, another phase, phase two right there with you, which is uh, so cool. So if I can just follow up another question for those who can stick around for a few more minutes, Dr. Gill, um, talk about, I mean, one thing that's definitely been instrumental in your success has been not mm -hmm. only you, but training a case manager, getting your team able, to, getting your t key team members able to close cash mm -hmm. services. You cannot grow yeah. a practice and get into phase two and be super profitable just by taking insurance. So what, what tips do you have for finding the right case manager or getting a day, a day one, day two process in place? I mean, where do you, where do you, uh, how important is that? Yeah. Holy cow. That, that process took years, uh, finding the right person in there, getting the right person trained up. Uh, don't be afraid to tell people it's a sales position. That was one of our first mistakes. We tried to tell them, Oh, you're a case manager. You're, you're relaying information. You're just letting them know what it's going to cost. You're not really a salesperson. We tried to present it that way. And that backfired. It bit us in the button multiple times when, as soon as the team member got to a training and I said, this is sales. I don't want to do sales. Don't be afraid to use that word. Now, we all think it's a bad word. It's not. Uh, read uh, Seller Be Sold by Grant Cardone. We've all read that. Uh, we've got the audio book for it too. And then getting with the person that we have now, she had a background in aesthetic sales. And so finding somebody like that who's not afraid, she's hungry. She's asking, okay, what numbers do I got to hit to hit my bonuses? And she's hitting them. Uh, when I was there in the office for the last month or two, she was doing all ROFs. I would sit in my office. She would bring the file and I would go over it with her. And I'd say, do you want me to go with you? She's like, nope, I got it. And just took them all over. That's huge. And, and you definitely, you, you learned who the, the, not who the wrong person was to put in those positions. The moment you found the right one, I mean, she just flipped and she's taken on even more leadership roles in the office, which is, which is great too. And, and uh, it's been, a, it's been a huge, a huge jump in, mm -hmm. in your guys' growth. Um, and then investing in your team. Last question. I know I keep saying last question, but yeah, no, it's okay. too good. Uh, investing in your team. You guys have invested a tremendous amount of time and energy and training in your team to get you here. Uh, I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it's worth it when this, the team, they turn over, they bring drama to the office, or maybe you have PTS staff, or you're just like, why are we doing this? You know, but then pushing through that and continuously investing in them. How is that? How, why was that so important? And not only getting you guys where you're at now, but where you guys yeah. are going. You have to. You got to invest in the, the one thing you didn't mention is money. You got to invest a lot of money in them. And you can't be afraid to do it. Pay them well. Give them good bonuses. The team trips that we do every year. Full benefits. Uh, you know, vision, dental, health, uh, gold plans through Regents. All the good stuff to get good people. There. You can't do it without them. That's the one thing that we got to realize. We're always looking at, oh, we don't have the budget to hire that person. I'll, I'll give them $15 an hour and then I'll bonus them. They don't understand what the bonus is or what it's going to be later. You're going to lose a good person. But start them off higher. Retain good people. You're, like you said, the turnover is not going to be, that's more detrimental than anything. Having those good people in there, that's what's going to grow your practice. And then hire people you don't even need. I, I would say that. I mean, a lot of people might not agree with me on that. 
but that's how you can grow and expand into new locations because a new location might pop up and a, a doc's wanting to get out of there within 30 days. If you don't have the extra team members to take that over, you're not gonna be able to do it. Well, that's happened to us. We've passed up on three or four growth opportunities because we didn't have docs and team members in place to, to help run them. Good point. That's great. Well, if there's one thing I see Dr. Morris does, you do, uh, the Taylors do, Dr. Tim, and, and now Dr. Shock and everyone here is you guys are working on investing in yourselves, investing in your team, you know, know your numbers, be willing to you know, find the right people for the right positions, you know, and, and look mm -hmm. at your, your, your growth positions, your marketer, your salesperson, your, you know, your, your managers, and just, you know, get the right people in place that are confident and can do it better than you can. And I'm telling you mm -hmm. by investing in them, you'll, you'll, they'll take you to the next level and they'll, and they'll love to follow your lead. That's the beautiful thing. I love seeing with you guys. When you have those core, really confident people, they want to follow you guys and they'll follow you all the way to the very end. So that's, yep. that's the key for today. Well, Dr. Gill, I appreciate you taking time uh, out of your, uh, cool. out of your day today. And, and Dr. Tim, same thing, everybody here. I'm a few minutes over on our, on our webinar time here, but guys, this, I think was a very productive conversation. So whether you're uh, signing in from Antigua, like Dr. Robin is, or Paris, France, or Dr. Gill is, or you're heading, uh, tune in from your office. It's always great having you guys on board these Tuesday. Thank you again for taking your time. Be part of investing yourself, investing your team. Next seventh division's happening next month, as well as our next workshop. Uh, just around the corner. And of course, uh, Dr. Matt Alexander is the one who's putting up his office for our um, our Bay Area, California training in July, right? I'm going to recap those dates for you guys. We got July just around the corner. Cindy put that in the chat box for you guys to review. So remember guys, July 20th to the 23rd, we will be in Livermore, California, just 45 minutes from San Francisco, about 40 minutes or so from San Jose. We can't wait to see you guys there in just a half an hour from the Oakland airport. So that's going to be happening here in a couple months and then or here in a month and a half. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next month for our upcoming communication closing seminar and workshop in 7th Division. Rock and roll, guys. It was great seeing you. Dr. Gill, thanks again. Dr. Steph, like everybody else, let's have another great week. Let's welcome in an even better second half of 2023. Take care now. Bye-bye.